Then, under the Clinton administration, we made a fatal mistake. Instead of winning the war and then moving back offshore, we decided to stay in the region physically. We decided to stay there. And we decided that instead of letting Iran and Iraq check each other, we would take it upon ourselves to check both countries. It was called dual containment. Let me explain to you what happened there. You all remember the Iraq-Iran War, which lasted from 1980 to 1988. Iran versus Iraq. The United States actually assisted Iraq in that war. You've seen the famous pictures of Donald Rumsfeld and Saddam Hussein standing next to each other, smiling. What was going on there is that we were in the period 79 to 91, that's when the 80 to 88 war took place, offshore balancing, we were playing the local powers off against each other. We were letting Iran and Iraq check each other, which is exactly what we should have done. We abandoned that policy in the first year of the Clinton administration, and we decided instead that we would keep forces in the region, no more over the horizon capability, and that we would check both Iran and Iraq ourselves. That's dual containment. Now what happens here is we get more and more involved. We've got forces in Saudi Arabia. And this is one of the principal motivating factors behind Osama bin Laden's attack on the United States on September 11th. Osama bin Laden was greatly bothered by the fact that the American military was physically located in Saudi Arabia. All right. So what happens in 2001 is the United States gets whacked. And what does the United States decide to do as a consequence? George, a. George W. Bush is now the president. We decide to abandon dual containment and adopt an offensively oriented policy of regime change. And that, of course, is what I'm going to talk about today, because I'm going to talk about U.S. Middle East policy from 2001 forward. I'm going to get to that in a second. The policy from 2001 forward is regime change. But what I've done here, what I've tried to do, is I want to walk you through the evolution of U.S. policy towards the Gulf since 1945, because it's important that you understand the context. You understand where regime change came from. The story that I'm telling you here about American Middle East policy from 45 forward is that from 45 to 79, the United States basically relied on others to do the heavy lifting in the Gulf. We did not have the military capability to do much of anything in the Gulf from 45 to 79. We relied first on the British, then mainly on the Iranians and lesser on the Saudis. Then, when it became clear that we were going to have to build military forces to deal with the region, we developed an over-the-horizon capability. We acted as an offshore balancer. We did not go onshore because we understood we'd get into trouble if we did. Okay? That all ended in 91. Actually, in 92. That all ended and what happened is we moved to dual containment. But it's containment, which is much more defensive in nature than regime change, which is offensive in nature. Then comes September 11th. We adopt regime change under George W. Bush, which is continued under President Obama.